Second Edges, chapter 15, verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, and the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Father Yahweh in the name of the Son Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching His word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right. Um, as you should know, Trump did an update speech today, and it was pretty long. So I couldn't watch all of it, but, you know, I was just going through and um, seeing different um, politics men who, uh, who uh, put up, you know, basically the information and the gist, the gist, the gist of uh, what President Trump and the updates about. All right. And uh, one thing Trump said that, uh, you know, sparked me to do this lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Al Shah, of course, is that he said this is going to be a hard two weeks. Matter of fact, it says White House projects 100K to 240K coronavirus deaths as Trump tells U.S. to prepare for a very painful two weeks. All right. So the upcoming two weeks or upcoming three weeks. You know, President Trump said it's going to be very painful. All right. And um, it's one thing I read in here. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll leave a link. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be other news, guys, uh, alternative news that's going to speak on this and come up with what it is. Specifically what Trump is actually saying, because he didn't really say specifically what he planned on doing. But through this article, you know, you could only speculate. And just wait. All right. And um, us of the hopeful elect, the Lord already said, you know, he's told us to watch and pray. You know, he said, before things spring up, I tell you of them. And we here to tell you that, you know, Lord's willing, you know, that this. All right. Is it. OK. This thing can actually die down, you know, but it can actually get worse. All right. This could lead into the Third World War. Don't be surprised. If um, down the line, you know, in the next two weeks, when we think when you think that you're going to come out of this quarantine, they tell you, you know, we're in a, a verge of a world war out of nowhere. But anyway, you know, we're dealing with um, the prophecy of the mark of the beast. OK, which is the RFID microchip, you know, now there's reports that was mentioned about troops. You know, going door to door, which uh, they call it medical martial law. They go door to door, you know, testing, seeing if people have the coronavirus, you know, and things of that nature. And, um, you know, when it starts one place is going to end up being in all places, you know, because that's how they move. That's how it works. So anyway, let me read this real quick. It says the White House Coronavirus Task Force on Tuesday pleaded with Americans to abide by the administration's extended social distancing guidelines to slow the spread of the coronavirus as the summer President Trump told Americans to brace for a very painful two weeks. I mean, what's, what's so painful about what we're, what we're doing now? What do they have up their sleeve to make this thing more dreadful, more draconian, I should say, you know, more restricting? All right, now let me say here, in um, North New Jersey, you have Raz Baraka, you know, now at uh, 8 o'clock, you know, and I'm, um, I'm going to find out tomorrow still. I'm still waiting to see how this thing playing out with this guy, um, Raz Baraka, you know, um, basically saying that, you know, he's locking down North. He's in agreement with the neighboring cities to uh, not allow people in or out unless for emergency purposes. 
And I believe it's uh, after 8. I don't know if they're going to, you know, open it back up in the daytime and let people do what they do. You know, but I'm guessing it's probably at 8 because that's when the curfew is. And you're not supposed to be driving or hanging outside. And um, we're going to see, you know. But that's draconian. That's restrictions already. Now, this is new. This is happening this week where here after 8 o'clock, you can't leave the city. You can't just go into another city. All right. So things are heating up, man. So anyway, it says um, to, to brace for a very painful two weeks and warn of thousands of more virus related deaths. All right. Which, you know, I personally believe is bullshit. You know, they're putting up 5G antennas, okay, and um, really it's coming out that it's not a virus that you're getting sick from, it's actually radiation. And I got a video that I'm going to play that the elder sent me, you know, very edifying, you know, he sent it right on time in the spirit of the Lord. And I know he probably don't know it, but I was in the middle of doing a lesson, well, I was about to, and it just, it, it just adds right onto the lesson. So I'm going to hopefully play that video, Lord willing. It says, um... Uh, here it is, verse, uh, I mean, paragraph, second paragraph. The surge is coming, and it's coming pretty strong. The president said in the White House briefing room in a lengthy pre press conference that lasts more than two hours. All right, now, the surge, when you look this word surge up, because I was really determined to figure out what it is that he's talking about. Is it painful that, you know, <laughs> some people say, well, People are having a hard time just staying in the house, not going to work, not being to go outside. Or is it that he has more draconian laws in place to bring forth more restriction or to force you, all right, into doing something? So this word surge, when you look it up, right? Surge. Surge. It says a sudden powerful forward or upward movement, especially by a crowd or by a natural force such as the waves or tide. All right. Flooding caused by tidal surges. All right. Rush. OK, so they're rushing. You know, this is some sort of powerful movement that he's going to push within these two weeks, I believe. You know, could be door to door, you know, could could be, uh, you know, possibly forcing a vaccine. You know, could be now, could be later. You know, we, we have to see. We have to see. Matter of fact, Habakkuk, too. All right. All right. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. Now it says of a crowd or of a natural force move suddenly and powerful forward, powerfully forward or upward. All right. So it is surge. That was his words using surge. And that's why it's good, you know, to look up words as we taught here in Great Millstone, because you clearly get more of an understanding. You know, the, the president the uh, politics, they deal with words that you may not understand. So you look them up, man, you know, and they always speak in codes. You know, when you understand how, you know, they do things, they speak in codes, they sugarcoat, um, you know, what their agenda and what they actually saying, you know. So it says the surge is coming and it is and it's pr coming pretty strong. The president said in the White House briefing room in a lengthy press conference that lasts more than two hours. All right, so I'll leave a link. Matter of fact, let me see if this video will play. I know it was pretty short. It was like a minute or something. Fox Nation presents shows that uplift, lives that inspire. Christ belongs to all people. He belongs to the whole world. I want every American to be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. We're going to go through a very tough two weeks. And then hopefully, as the experts are predicting, as I think a lot of us are predicting after having studied it so hard, we're going to start seeing some real light at the end of the tunnel. But this is going to be a very painful, very, very painful two weeks. When you look and see at night, the kind of death that's been caused by this invisible enemy, it's, it's incredible. I was watching last night Governor Murphy of New Jersey say 29 people died today, meaning yesterday, and 
others talking about numbers far greater, but you get to know a state. I know New Jersey so well, and you hit 29 people and uh, hundreds in other locations, hundreds in other states. And this is going to be a rough two-week period. As a nation, we face a difficult few weeks as we approach that that really important day when we're going to see things get better all of a sudden. And it's going to be like a burst of light, I really think and I hope. Our strength will be tested and our endurance will be tried. But America will answer with love and courage and ironclad resolve. This is the time for all Americans to come together and do our part. All right, so there it is. You know, I want to stop this. Hopefully it don't play on. Let's see. All right, cool. All right, so, you know, as he said, you know, and you got to think too, man. Like, they keep saying that... Um, Joining us now with more, Lindsay, Senator Lindsey Graham. You know, they're saying that more and more people are going to be affected. How do they know that? Because this is not, you know, let me say this, you know, from watching and, and understanding what's going on, you know, this is radiation. And they're putting up 5G towers outside where you live as as I speak, man. All right. They're doing it in the, skid, the kids' schools, around the schools, and all through the neighborhoods and all of that. So more and more people are going to be diagnosed with this virus because it's radiation, you know. And that's just me, per, me personally uh, saying that, you know, all right, so, you know, from here, um, you know, after I seen that, I had saw this, this is, uh, the Net News Network, and we watch these guys, uh, from time to time, when they speaking on a matter, and, uh, let's quote this video, let me play it, totally healthy, uh, but it is sweltering in here, so I'm doing this interview basically from a sauna, uh, but in any event, I don't think the government is planning uh, on this, but this is what's going to happen. And see, here's the problem. The Federal Reserve is artificially suppressing interest rates. And the Federal Reserve has told the world that there is an unlimited bid in the market, that the Federal Reserve is going to overpay for as many treasuries or mortgage-backed securities or muni bonds or corporate bonds that anybody wants to unload on them. So the Federal Reserve is now the garbage bag for debt. And everybody who owns debt is going to be dumping it on the Fed. And, and so the Fed is going to own all the debt. But that means they're going to have to print trillions and trillions and trillions more than they bargained for. And the irony of it is, the more money the Fed prints to buy the debt that nobody wants, the more inflation they create in the process, which means the more debt that they're going to have to buy. Because if the Fed wants to keep interest rates at 1%, right, or whatever they're at, or half a percent, and inflation is now 5% or 8%, Nobody in the world is going to want to hold on to a dollar denominated bond that is yielding so much less than the inflation rate because nobody wants to just sit there and get wiped out. So the more inflation the Fed creates to artificially keep interest rates low, the more bonds it's going to have to buy because people don't want to suffer the losses, which means they have to print more and more. And so it's a self-perpetuating spiral where the Fed ends up being not just a buyer of last resort, but the only resort. The Fed ends up buying all the bonds all over the world, and they have to crank out printing presses, and they completely destroy the currency. And so ultimately, the problem is not going to be that people don't have any money, but that the money doesn't have any value. And then it won't matter how big the stimulus is. If the government sends you a big check and you can't buy anything with it because nobody will accept it because it's lost all of its purchasing power, then the government is completely impotent. And that's exactly where we're headed. Except the problem is when you have hyperinflation, the economic chaos, chaos that results from that is, is, is incredible. I mean, you can look at what's happened in other countries that have been. All right, you hear that? Let me play that again. And they said that stimulus pack is supposed to come to everyone. I think in the next two weeks, three weeks, you know, <laughs> but how, you know, hey, hey, if this be a hard week, we're going to see what these weeks going to be so hard on. All right. Because possibly, you know, don't hey, most high can, uh, you know, flip the script and uh, all, all, all anarchy can go, go. Come on. You know, I mean, excuse me. All anarchy can break out. You know, next thing you know, your supermarket is not having food. You know, the dollar is plummeted. You know, your money is not worth anything. So let me just... Currency. And so ultimately, the problem is not going to be that people don't have any money, but that the money doesn't have any value. 
And then it won't matter how big the stimulus is. If the government sends you a big check and you can't buy anything with it because nobody will accept it because it's lost all of its purchasing power, then the government is completely impotent. And that's exactly where we're headed. Except the problem is when you have hyperinflation, the economic chaos, chaos that results from that is, is incredible. I mean, you can look at what's happened in other countries that have endured this. Uh, it's it, you know people who think it's bad right now, who think that you know people being you know cooped up in their in their apartments, uh, you know uh, watching Netflix and uh, and eating takeout food. I mean, that's not suffering. Wait till there's no food to take out. So what does this mean for our current tax? You know, you can go to this video and watch this video. You see the title, uh, the net news, the net next news network. And um, this is why I read the scripture in the very beginning of the video, because uh, either way, you know, we know that Yahweh Barsham, Yahweh Shai, all right, is destroying this place of which you call America, because in, in the scriptures it is called Babylon the Great, which Babylon the Great means great confusion, all right? And we understand that also Esau, with these elites like the Rothschilds, all right, they're pushing an agenda, you know? That's why we do these shows all right, and we push these this message out there to the hopeful elect, and we also are warning, you know, the people. We're warning you two thirds. We're warning you Edomites. We're warning you Ishmaelites. All right, all you other nations, man. Okay. So anyway, it says I'm gonna read it again. Second Edges 15 and 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. That's actually happening now. You know, even though it can get uh, much, much more worse. You know, Donald Trump saying that it's going to be another pain, uh, well, more painful, hard two weeks. It says, um, for because their pride, the city shall be troubled. And that it says the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. And right now you do have men afraid, but these things are going to intensify, man. All right. You're going to know that this is Jacob's trouble. All right. When this thing actually go down, man, it says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor but shall destroy their house with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. This is prophecy. When the Lord does decide to allow this prophecy to be fulfilled, it will. All right. You're going to have sedition among men. All right. It says, verse 20, behold, say of the most high, Yahweh, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east to Lebanus, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. All right. It's also, too, that the Lord said his determination is to gather the nations. All right. To pour upon them his indignation. You see? So that's why I made mention of that World War Three. Don't be surprised. You know, but we're dealing with the chip. We're dealing with what what's before us now. And that's this coronavirus. But anything is possible, man. You know, anything right now is possible because the Lord can just jump shift, put this thing in sixth gear. I'll say seventh gear, you know, and ride it on out. It says, like as they uh, do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom, thus saith the Lord Yahweh. All right, because the Lord has a chosen. He has an election. All right, a people who he have chosen. An election who he have chosen. Verse 22. My right hand shall not spare the sinners. And my sword shall not cease over them that shewed innocent that shewed innocent blood. Will shed innocent blood upon the earth. The fire is gone forth from his wrath. And have consumed the foundation of the earth. And the sinners like as a straw, a straw that is kindled. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power defile not my sanctuary. All right. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful chapter continuing to read 15, you know. So anyway, from there, I got one more video I wanted to play. Which dealing with this coronavirus. Coming out that, you know, this virus, well, people getting sick is not actually from a virus, it's actually from radiation. So check this out. Work ID. I work for Well Cornell Medicine on 68th New York. I do comparative pathology research. We deal with biohazardous materials and radiation 
particles. We inject animals like rhesus monkeys, rats, and mice with diseases and radioactive agents. Two weeks ago, when I went to work, I noticed the security guards were in Tyvek hazmat suits and they were armed, which is not normal. But I didn't pay it any mind. I go upstairs to work, I clock in. My boss is like, yo, listen, you're not needed, but we need you to surrender your Geiger counter. My Geiger counter was attached to my ID because we deal with radiation emissions in my department on the seventh floor, which is the only department that deals with radiation. But they wanted me to surrender my Geiger counter. When I left work, the only people that were left in my building's facility were the scientists, the professors, the researchers, and security guards that were armed. It's not the virus that's getting people sick. It's 5G network from the radiation. And the reason why they have me surrender my Geiger counter is so if I'm in a proximity of people that have 5G networks, my Geiger counter is going to detect that I'm in a proximity of radiation. That's what's getting people sick. That's what's getting people um, with respiratory issues. That's why some people are dying. Now, my homie works for Verizon. He got a message via email from corporate instructing him and his 100-man crew to pump 5G network cables throughout the tri-state area, whether buildings or houses were abandoned or not. The letter said, if your crew gets sick, we'll send them home and you keep on working. Don't worry. When they say that the oil is short, you'll be first dibs to get the oil. Uh, the oil you take care of. Exactly. Uh, that's deep, bro. I'm glad you came on and told my audience that just now because... Damn, I've, been, I, I, I've been trying to hit you up for a minute, man, for a minute, because cause shit is real. And, and niggas don't really know what's going on. They believe in what the media is telling them. Just understand, whatever the media is saying they're going to do, they're not going to do. They're telling you they're going to give you $1,200 stimulus check for this money. How? When they say that the money is going to be contaminated, then they're going to shut down the banks worldwide. How the fuck are you going to cash that check if you're quarantined and you can't leave and the banks are shut down? They're doing technology and manipulating the people to believe a big-ass fucking lie. Mm, that's a fact. I believe so, too, bro. And a lot of people is not uh, aware of 5G and the, and the health benefits of it. 5G is, is game over. It's, it's frying us. So it's just like in Wuhan. When, when, when they, that's the first place they really rolled out 5G. Exactly. And, and, and I believe here, it's New, New York City, obviously. You know what I'm saying? But in New York, look at, look at the look at the rates going up of people with coronavirus. How they, how they, how they, how they diagnose all these people like they ain't got no tests? That has the coronavirus? Right or wrong? Facts. Yo, you know what's crazy? Um, the symptoms that they're saying is caused by this virus are the same exact symptoms from radiation contamination. They're talking about loss of taste, loss of smell, hair loss, vomiting, diarrhea. Pretty soon they're going to say a new symptom is blood in your stool and blood in your urine, uh, uh, constant parchedness that you'll have an unquenchable thirst because radiation boils the water molecules in your brain, in your respiratory tract, and in your reproductive system. So don't be surprised when this shit disappears and 10 years later it comes back because that's what's going to happen. You're sterile and you can't produce. There was a movie called uh, Children of Men or The City of Men. Children of Men. Right. Where a war came out and for years no one was able to reproduce because right. one woman gave birth to a right. baby and it changed the world. These guys right. are literally acting out scripts from movies and fictional books to instill fear and, and the media propaganda. Fear is the lowest vibration and that also weakens your immune system. And when you're scared, the adrenal chrome that's in your blood makes your blood pump faster, harder, and stronger, which is what the pedal blood suckers need in order to be young again, which is why they're also saying that kids are getting infected and they're going to mandate or force inoculate the vaccine on niggas. The FDA takes a year and a half to approve of a vaccine. Why would the three months of the year, all of a sudden they have this vaccination ready to be mandated, forced, forced on you, whether you say yes or no, they're going to... This is my work idea. I work for Will Cornell Medicine. All right, so there it is, man. You know, but I'm going to say this. There is no 10 more years from now. This is it, man. All right, according to Bible prophecy. And, um, you know, he said some good things, you know, and what they call it. um, With the things, the uh, books and the movies, it's called, um, it's a pre-programming. I forgot the name of it. I know a brother just did a lesson on that, on how they pre-program you. You know, for the things that they're actually going to do, 
when people laugh and they say, you know, when you talk of these things that the that was in the movies or in the books, they say it call you a conspiracy, you know. Well, guess what? It's happening. You know, so I hope you were edified by this lesson. Um, you know, also too for brothers, um, start rocking your sun guide stones uh when you out. You know, it's always good, you know, to rock your stones. You know, we in Israel, we rock stones. So rock your sun get sun guide stones, man. All right, them black sun guide stones, neck, arm, all that, you know. So with that, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.